Hi, I'm Warren, and welcome back to this Intermediate Power BI course. In this video, we're going to build our date table. Okay, just before we get going, please remember to save your desktop file so you don't lose what we've done so far. So you can just go through and save it where you want to, to a folder that you want to keep it in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and build our date dimension. Now there are multiple ways to do this. You can do it in Power Query. You can use the DAX formula language to build your date table. And there are even external tools like a tool here that is called Bravo. You can Google Power BI Bravo. This is built by SQL BI, a really, really good resource for Power BI. If you ever want to learn anything, go to their website, check out their YouTube channel. They're really, really good. So on this Bravo plugin, you can click on it and it can help you build a date table. But what we're going to do today, we're going to build it through DAX. So in the comments below, I am going to give you this file here that has DAX code that you can copy and paste into your model that will build your date table. Don't worry too much about what this DAX code does. I will talk you through it in a minute. But what I'm going to do, the follow-up course to this course will be an intermediate DAX course where we will go through and learn exactly how to do DAX coding and we'll look at building things like date tables in DAX. So what you can do, you can open up this code and you can highlight everything and you can copy it. Then when you're in Power BI, you want to go to your data view. So we click on data view. So we here where we can see the actual data for our tables. And we want to go through and we want to create a new table. So here under new table, we're going to click on this new table button. And you're going to paste the code. Make sure that this table one is highlighted. You're going to paste the code in here. So what this is, it's defining, this is the name of the table. So we're saying we're creating a table called date, which is equal to, and here's the code that builds that date table. So for starters, we have to create a list of dates. So we want a date table from this date to this date. So don't worry about this comment, all the commented out code. In future courses, we're going to use the same script, but we're going to uncomment this and we're going to create dynamic date ranges. But for this course, we're going to hard code them. So we have a variable called start date and we're going from 2022, January 1. So the 1st of January, 2022. And this could be any date range. Our data has data from 2022 to 2023. So we're going to create an end date just to the end of 2023. So this will create a list of dates from the 1st of January, 2022 to the 31st of December, 2023. That's going to create a calendar from start date to end date. It's going to return a result. And here we're going to generate that range of dates. We're going to get the current date and we're going to do a bit of formatting here. So you don't have to worry too much about this, but we're going to get the month number, the month name, calendar year number, calendar year, etc. So these are all the different columns where all we're doing is we're taking the current date and we're formatting it differently. Like in Excel, you can have the current date, you can extract the year or the year and month. So you can format that date differently. That's what we're doing here. We're creating new columns with different formats of the current date. And then we're returning it at the bottom here to build the table. So all we need to do is push enter. And there at the bottom, to get rid of the screen, we can click on this little tick if it hasn't been clicked on. There's this option here. We click on it twice just to collapse this little formula window. And now you can see we have our date range. We have our month number, our month name. These are all the different formats in the code here. Month number, month name. We're just looking at current year, current date. We want the month, month, month version to get the month name. Month number, we want month of current date. So that's what we can see at the bottom here. Month number, month name, etc. And if you want to, you can go in and you can add additional lines. You can just paste additional lines in here with different formatting 
you can Google it on the internet or chat GTP. You can get different ways of looking at a date and you can add them in here. And this will automatically build additional columns with that formatting in. So yeah, we've got quarter name, quarter number, calendar year, quarter number, etc. All the way through to today, it's putting today's date. And what I've done is I've created a future date column, which will show you if the current date is, or if the calendar date is ahead of the current date. So here you can see the calendar date here is the 5th, 26th of May last year. So that is not future date. If we want to go and look at future dates here, we can filter by one. Here, if it is equal to today or ahead of today, it will give a one. And this is what we can use this field. Basically, if you only want to show in your graph, the months up to and including the current month, you can use this future date field to do that. You can say don't include anything with a one because often you don't want to show if you're in the month of February a chart that has all the months to December and you only have two values. You have January and February and then you have everything else blank. You might not want to show those blanks, so that's what you can use this column for. So we'll go back and we'll select all again. Or if you want to clear filters, you can just click on clear filter there. So here we have our date table. So that's great. The only way we can use this date table is when we go and join it to our data. So let's go back. If this pops up, which it will do all the time, you can just minimize it there. Here we have our date table now showing. And what we want to do is we want to join it to our sales, to be able to filter the sales data by date. So here we have our sale date. So we can grab that. Our date column in our date table is the main date field that we use. So we can drag that across and we can drop it on sale date. And here again, you can see we have a date dimension that is one date, can appear many times for transactions in our transaction table. And that's filtering down. And if you want to neaten things up, you can just collapse all of these. And then you can have all your dimensions at the top and you can have your transaction table at the bottom there. So there we've built our date table. Often, I just want to check and see that it's working. So I grab a table and I take my date field. And then whatever we've related it to, I take the sales date and I look at the two next to each other and I make sure that's the 1st of January. That's the 1st of January. That's the second, second. So you can see that relationship is working. If it wasn't working, let's go and delete that relationship there. When we look here, it'll give you either an issue or it will just show you two random dates. So if we go back here and we take sales date and we take date, okay, it's giving us an issue there. So that's why we can see that it's not allowing that to work. So how we fix that, we go back and we just drag date back onto sales date. Now we can see it's working. So that's just a good check to make sure that the relationships are working there. You can do that with all your tables. If you want to go and compare that your customer table is definitely linking back to your sales table, you could take your customer ID and then take customer ID from your customer table and you can see they're the same. That means that they are linking correctly. It's not showing one, two, three and here maybe 5, 10, 11, whatever the case. So we can see that that's working. So we can delete those. So we have our date table. What we can do, we can click on the date table here and you can mark it as a date table. So you're letting Power BI know this is now going to be used as my date table. And when you click on that, you click on mark as date table, it's going to ask you what column defines your unique date identifier, which is our date column. So we click on that. It says validated successfully, so it's happy. And now you can see it's seeing it as a date table. So now we have all of our tables in our model. We have our relationships defined. So what we can start doing now is looking at formatting our model and creating our navigation and our pages, and then we'll get into doing the actual reporting. So remember, save the model so far. 
that you don't lose anything. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.